Yeah, 10 and 11, welcome to your analysis of Lanyon in Jekyll and Hyde in preparation for your GCSE English Literature exam. Very basically then, much like Dr Jekyll, Lanyon is a doctor. And he used to be close friends with Jekyll, but when Jekyll became obsessed with studying the darker aspects of science, Lanyon broke off their friendship. Lanyon is a contrast to Jekyll, as Lanyon is a traditional slash rational scientist. The quotation that shows that they differ in their scientific opinions and beliefs and the break in their friendship is Jekyll became too fanciful for me. And if you look at the adjective fanciful, it highlights that Jekyll believes in science that Lanyon doesn't believe in because remember Lanyon is rational. He is an upper class gentleman. He is initially described as a hearty, healthy, dapper, red faced gentleman. Now, this description is huge, guys, and we must remember it because as the novella progresses, Lanyon changes. When he witnesses Jekyll drinking the potion, he undergoes huge changes. So if we remember that initially, uh, because we see the novella through Utterson's eyes, he describes him as hearty and healthy. Remember those two adjectives. And when he sees Utterson, he appears friendly and sociable. And we're told he sprang from his chair and welcomed him with both hands. So try and remember those two quotes, because as I say, there will be a huge change in Lanyon. I realise that there's a typing error on this power bank. I do apologise. So it's at the top there. Um, in terms of being rational, both Lanyon and Jekyll are doctors and they are both respected. OK, now we're also told that they were inseparable friends. Look again at your adjective inseparable. OK, so something serious has happened that would jeopardise their friendship. And as I say, Lanyon deals with rational science, whereas Jekyll deals with mystical and supernatural science and Lanyon disagrees with this and he thinks it's unscientific balderdash so again there's Lanyon's opinion on Jekyll's beliefs and he goes further claiming Jekyll he says he began to go wrong wrong in mind look at your repetition of wrong okay whereas Jekyll thinks Lanyon is an ignorant blatant pedant so again You've got huge contrasts in the two men here, which naturally has affected their friendship. So again, just a reminder, they were inseparable friends. Jekyll starts to deal with mystical and supernatural science. Lanyon thinks it's unscientific. He thinks Jekyll has gone wrong, wrong in mind. And Jekyll thinks that Lanyon is ignorant. And therefore, they are no longer friends. Okay. OK, so obviously the secret. Now, Lanyon struggles with Jekyll's secret. And much like Utterson, who is also rational, Lanyon believes Jekyll must be suffering from a cerebral disease. Because they are both rational man, men, sorry, rational men, Utterson and Lanyon, they try to come up with reasons for Jekyll's behaviour. And they both think he is ill or suffering from something. Lanyon witnesses the transformation of Jekyll to Hyde, seeing he's gone too far. OK, now, as I've just said, because Lanyon is a rational, traditional scientist and he witnesses the change, he is unable to ignore the supernatural occurrence and he dies. Now, the death leaves the reader with an impression of just how horrifying the change must be if it affects Lanyon so physically that he will die. Also, he dies because he it's almost as if he doesn't want to live in a world where mystical and supernatural science is proven to be real. OK. We get this as a quotation. The quarrel with Lanyon was incurable. So the quarrel between Jekyll 
and Lanyon is incurable. Now, incurable reminds us of this suggestion that it's a disease or that something is wrong with Jekyll in the sense that he is sick. Now, because it's incurable, we know that the men will never be friends again. And remember, it's because Lanyon thinks he's gone too far and Lanyon thinks he is wrong in his mind. I suppose as well, the secret is, is burdensome, burdensome, isn't it? Because then um, as Hyde, he's, he commits murder. I'm going to carry on to Lanyon's change. We get this. So remember from earlier, I said he was hearty and healthy and that he sprang up to welcome his visitor. Now we've got the doctor was confined to the house. Now, there's a similarity here because Jekyll hides himself away. Lanyon hides himself away because the secret is too much. Okay? What they have witnessed and experienced is too awful. So when Utterson sees him this time, we get this. He is shocked at the change which had taken place in the doctor's appearance. Right? Look at the metaphor here. He had his death warrant written legibly upon his face. So the hearty, healthy guy who was, who was springing up to me, visitors, earlier is now looking like death. The rosy man had grown pale. Earlier we had that he had a red face. Now we've got the adjective pale. To go a bit further with your key quotes, his flesh had fallen away. The burden of the secret is too much for, for Lanyon. That not only does it affect his mind, but it affects him physically. He was visibly bolder and older. Some deep-seated terror of the mind. So we get what it's done to him mentally, deep-seated terror, and we get the physical repercussions and consequences of Lanyon witnessing Jekyll drinking the potion. Again, we get this change in Lanyon to emphasise how horrifying it is to the reader. Okay. And remember, the scientific aspect, the aspect of this is that Lanyon can't live and doesn't want to live in a world where supernatural and mystical science is proven to exist. Okay. Massive quote, I don't expect to remember it all, but we get this. But Lanyon's face changed and he held up a trembling hand. I wish to say or hear no more of Dr Jekyll, he said in a loud, unsteady voice. I am quite done with that person and I beg that you will spare me any allusion to one whom I regard as dead. So again, for your, your short, sharp quotations in this answer, face changed. The adjective trembling the fact that his voice is unsteady, showing us that he has been shaken to his very core. And then obviously the fact that he sees or regards Jekyll as dead. So it's, it's, it's quite serious on Lanyon's part, isn't it? A little bit more detail then. From the moment he receives Jekyll's letter, Lanyon seems confused. And we get this, the quote... Greed of curiosity forces Lanyon to stay and witness the transformation. Now, this is interesting because uh, curiosity has made Jekyll perform this experiment, which brings out Hyde. Lanyon is curious to see the transformation. So he has as well this, this need, this need for more in the same way that Jekyll does. As Jekyll transforms Lanyon, I had sprung to my feet and leaped back. Look at that. Leaped back because he's so shocked and he's horrified at what he sees. My mind submerged in terror. Look at, look at your abstract now, terror. And then he finally goes, oh God, exclamation mark. Okay, uh... I suppose religious reference there, you know, can God can, can even God help them? Um, no, in this instance, God can't help them. Um, 
So really the witnessing of the of the change is huge in this in this novella. And interestingly, Lanyon, the rational, traditional scientist who doesn't believe in the metaphysical or the mystical or the supernatural, is the one to see it happen. You've got to think about why Stevenson does that. Why is it Lanyon, the rational one that witnesses it occur? Is it so the reader feels more suspense? Or is, is it so the reader believes more that that, that man um, is commingled between good and evil? Or is it because we needed Lanyon to believe it? So again, oh God, I screamed and oh God, again and again, for there before my eyes, look at your paws, pale and shaken and half fainting and groping before him with his hands. Like a man restored from death, pause again, there stood Henry Jekyll. Okay. So look at the, oh God, oh God, he's screaming. Okay. I saw what I saw, I heard what I heard, and my soul sickened at it. And yet, now when that sight has faded from my eyes. Look at that soul sickened and it's almost like he's uh, reminding himself I saw what I saw I heard what I heard as if oh my god it is real this scientific boulder dash this unscientific boulder dash that he claimed earlier on is real has happened he's witnessed it himself um, and his soul is sickened at it alliteration okay soul sickened as I said earlier it has uh affected the very core of Lanyon. Again, key quotations. My life is shaken to its roots. Sleep has left me. The deadliest terror sits by me at all hours of the day and night. So look at this. We've got like a build up. It's almost like a triple happening here. So his life is shaken. He can't sleep and it's a deadly terror that sits by him. So my life is shaken to the root metaphor. And then the deadliest terror sits by me, personification. He is haunted all day and all night by what he is seeing because it challenges this uh, traditional man. It also challenges the norms and the decorum of Victorian society. Okay. I sometimes think if we knew all, he tells Utterson, we should be more glad to get away. So actually, Lanyon argues that if everybody knew the truth, they would all want to die. That death is a better prospect than knowing that man uh, is two, that man can be divided into two, that we have this darker, sinister side of us that is almost waiting to be released. And when it is released, um, has the potential to commit Awful crimes. The creature who crept into my house that night was, on Jekyll's own confession, known by the name of Hyde. And there comes the big reveal from Lanyon. Okay, and look how he refers to Hyde as the creature. And that, I suppose, uh, links back into when Utterson seen him and Utterson couldn't describe him, but he knew he was filled with disgust. And we get other things about creatures to describe Hyde, don't we? We get ape-like theory, we get juggernaut, we get troglodyte. Okay. Additional notes and on Lanyon. Uh, so Lanyon, he has a minor role in the novella, but it is central. It is central because he is the one that witnesses the change. When the reader first meets him, he speaks dismissively of Jekyll and the science he believes in. Because Lanyon represents rationalism. He acts as a contrast to Jekyll, as both men are doctors, well respected and successful, but they have chosen different paths. Lanyon chooses to engage in rational materialist science, while Jekyll prefers to pursue what might be called metaphysical science. As a rationalist, as a rationalist Lanyon cannot deal with the world that Jekyll's experiments have revealed. Lanyon prefers to die rather than go on living in a universe that has ruined his ideals and beliefs. Okay. 
I hope this has been useful then. So the key things then, you know, the rational, traditional scientist who, who um, is a gentleman falls out with with Jekyll, his close friend, because of what they believe in. He doesn't believe in what Jekyll believes in. As we know, he says it's unscientific, a balderdash, and that Jekyll had gone wrong, wrong in mind. Um, and then um, we see the physical change of Lanyon, that he becomes pale. Uh, he becomes bolder, he becomes older. And it's because he witnesses the transformation and he describes, obviously, the transformation as well. So as I said earlier, it is a, it is key. And it was also, I suppose, a structural device by Stevenson that it should be Lanyon, the traditional rational man, to see the change. OK, uh, I hope this has been useful. Go back and make a note and remember your key quotations um, and massive good luck in your English literature exam.